I believe that trauma lives in the tissue and I've seen it and we've seen people let go of stuff that they've been carrying like a bag of coals for years through releasing through their tissues. Hi everyone, Drew Prode here, host of the Broken Braid Podcast. In today's episode, we have Lauren Roxburgh, the body whisperer, here to talk to us about movement medicine. Movement is medicine. Just like food is medicine, movement is medicine. We're gonna talk about all things fascia and the power centers in our body. These are centers that we typically associate with pain or stress, but they're actually the source of our power. It's a fascinating interview. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Broken Brain Podcast, where we dive deep into the topics of neuroplasticity, epigenetics, mindfulness, functional medicine, and mindset, all with the goal of helping you understand that your brain and your body, in this case, are not broken. I'm your host, Drew Road, and each week my team and I bring on a new guest who we think can help you improve your brain health, feel better, and live more. This week's guest is Lauren Roxburgh. Yay. Thank you for being here, Lauren. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Lauren is an international author, speaker, educator, and corporate presenter, frequently dubbed the body whisperer, <laughs> which I love. She's board certified structural integration practitioner with a degree in nutrition and exercise physiology. She's been featured in Vogue, Goop, Chalkboard Magazine, and many other media outlets. She's also the author of The Power Source, The Hidden Key to Ignite Your Core, empower your body, release stress, and realign your life. Lauren, welcome to the Broken Brain Podcast. <laughs> Thank you, I'm so excited to be here. One time I was at a seminar and it was for people that were in like the wellness industry and this guy was on stage and he was saying, look, when people ask you what you do, yeah, instead of getting caught up into all the different things that so many of you people do, answer the question with, I help people. And then Ooh, fill in the I love blank. That. Right. So if I would so ask cool. you that question of what do you do, and you start off with I help people blank, what would you say? Oh, I love that question. I mean, it's really simple. I just help empower people. I empower help people become empowered to learn more about their bodies and understand how their bodies are these miracle, miraculous systems. It's so. amazing. <laughs> what do you think is the state of the union when you think about the world as a whole? Yeah. And the state of the union that we're in, in modern society and our relationship with our bodies is a big question. But what do you think of that when you look out there in the world and you see people's relationships with their bodies as a whole? You know, I think Western culture has served us very well in many ways, but it's taken people out of their body, out of the physical sensations, the awareness, the messages, the wisdom of our cells. I think a lot of people are living more in their heads and their um, brains, if you will, more than living in their sensory system and in their, in their fascial organ, which is basically the sensory organ. So we've lost touch with that system in our body. And I think that we're going to need it more and more if we want to be able to really you know reach our highest potential and go big and do amazing things on the planet too because really tuning in is where the keys are and that's where the creative energy is as well so when we we're in that state of fight or flight and stress all the time it's going to take us into that survival mode and we lose that the ability to connect to innovation and creative energy not just being an artist well actually being an artist could be anything but you know we lose that connection to the energy of just trying to figure things out yeah, I think it's like a state of disconnection. Yes. And a big central theme of your work is how to reestablish that by also leaning into these things and these messages. In fact, part of what you say is as understanding these messages, things that we often think of as bad are actually the gateway for unlocking that potential. Yes. Tell us oh, more I about love that. that you got that out of everything we've discussed um, or what I've written. So basically, like, I think a lot of times people have been trying to numb pain. And pain is really a message from our body. It's just asking for breath, for stretching, for alignment, um, for hydration in the connective tissue, for a nerve that needs a release. So a lot of people in our culture, our culture in general, the Western culture, we've just decided to numb pain. And really it's, it's stagnation. It's a blockage of chi or energy or however you want to say it, blood um, or compression in joints or in, in the body, in the organs or whatever it is. It's a blockage. So... The key to that is, again, deepening the awareness, listening and reframing the way we view pain as instead of being a victim of pain, like going, thank you, body. I really appreciate that message. There's so much to learn. I know you have kids. I don't have kids. And I often remember 
that uh, one of the guests in this podcast was saying, you know, we want to teach our kids that really things don't have to always be good and bad. Like when yeah. it's raining outside, we don't have to say, oh, it's a bad day outside. Totally. When we make that association, now all of a sudden a bunch of other assumptions come along with that association. Yeah. And in that same way, you're teaching us that our body, when we have a pain, when we have something going on, instead of saying, oh shoot, my knee is acting up. Like why won't my body just do what it needs to do? Mm -hmm. Why aren't my, why is my core as strong as it is? Mm -hmm. Why do I always have butterflies? Why do I have this, that, this shoulder pain? Mm -hmm. Instead listening and saying, what is my body trying to teach me right now? Exactly. And that's the empowerment, you know, basically. That's the empowerment point is like we're getting in more in tune and becoming more aligned with our authentic selves by listening to those messages. So the physical messages are just the beginning. It's like the bridge into maybe you're in a toxic relationship or you're in a toxic job or you're in a toxic environment that and your body is coiling in and, you know, shutting down and getting tight and like, you know, holding all that energy in. So... A lot of times those discomforts or pains are your body saying, we need change. We want to change and evolve. Let's give an example. Uh, you know, one source of pain can mean a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. But as one example, a lot of people notice that they carry a lot of tension in their jaw. Yes. You know, how can we think like you and start to understand what messages that might be signifying especially if they have tmj or if they yeah. have just a general tension or a lot of times you're in yoga class and then the teacher's like unclench your jaw mm -hmm. and it feels so good and you realize like wow my jaw has been clenched the entire day yeah you don't even realize it it's subconscious a lot subconscious. of times too so the jaw thing is a very common thing i've seen that in my practice over the years of working with people hands-on for 20 years and i personally was also a jaw person growing up as an athlete and um, being a very, you know, a sprinter, I played water polo at UC Santa Barbara and swam growing up, all-American swimmer. And so I was very much in that force, you know, in that powerful force making it happen. And I was using every ounce of me to make it happen and like clutch and bear down. And so I know personally, because I've felt what it feels like to feel that tension in the jaw. And so I, I think it's good because then I can share my experience as well. And what it is, it's the nervous system. So it all comes down to the nervous system. It's, you know, the nervous system is basically the spinal cord. So you have the cranium and the sacrum. So you have in between those points, you have your spinal cord. And within the spinal cord is the cerebral spinal fluid. And so whenever we're in a reactive state, a state of survival or stress or force or pushing through or making it happen, that's the masculine energy of doing then we can tend to clutch and a lot of times again because we've lost touch with these bodily function connections or messages then we tend to get stuck in that clutch so it's like it's not a bad thing to do that and force things but we don't want to be stuck doing that all the time because then we're out of balance so the jaw thing is again deepening the awareness there's actually a fascial um a line of fascia that connects the jaw all the way down through the spine to the pelvic floor so a lot of times we are clutching our pelvic floor and then that's clutching the jaw. And so a lot of dentists that see TMJ will send people to someone like me to release the pelvic floor and the jaw because it's that connection because wow. it's both. And you said that so clearly, but I mean, that's like <laughs> kind of like a mind blown situation. Yeah. Let's even take a step back. We've done a couple, we've done one episode on fascia with a dear friend of mine, Dr. Shalini Bhatt from Toronto. Amazing. And, um, but that was many, many episodes ago. Okay. A lot of new listeners to this podcast. <laughs> Great. Let's start off with the basics. Okay. What is fascia? Why does it matter? And kind of why and how have we ignored it? So fascia essentially is this living matrix that wraps around our entire body. It's right underneath our skin and it's above the muscle. So think of it like a full body wetsuit, okay? And it's um, also wraps around each individual muscle and wraps around the organs. Yeah, and it's not energy, it's an actual thing. No, it's an actual like connective tissue. Not that it can't tissue. be energy too, Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's an actual connective tissue. Yeah, it's think of like saran wrap in the body, right? And what happens when we go under stress or we have trauma or we have injuries or accidents, that fascia can become like hard, thick, dense, kind of pieces of plastic within the body or chunks of, um, you know, you get a scar tissue piece of a knot. It's not in the muscle, that's in the connective tissue that gets wound up and loses circulation and blood flow. So essentially what fascia is, is this sheath 
in the body it's yeah you're right it's not energy but the fascinating thing about fascia is that within the fascial matrix again remember it's right above below the skin and above the muscle is you have your lymph nodes live in the fascia your nerves are in the fascia so that's why science is now calling our fascial matrix our sensory organ so you know how they're saying that skin is an organ mm -hmm. well fascia is now considered an organ in medicine as well so the other really cool thing which i always love to explain is that our chi our meridians are in our fascia as well. So when you go get, you know, cupped or you get needles, yeah, acupuncture, it's going into the fascia to release the blockages and open up the pathways, the energy pathways. And the example that you gave of the jaw shows that oftentimes we think that where the pain is, is the source of it. Yes. But there could be connected somewhere else. And that goes Absolutely. back to the fascia. I always laugh at this analogy that my friend Shalini had shared one time in the interview. She was saying if, Imagine somebody wearing a one-piece bathing suit, like a woman, yeah. that a man could wear it too. <laughs> and at the top, right around the neck, where the one piece is kind of going around the neck, mm -hmm. if you pulled that, you would end up giving them a wedgie. Yeah, I love that. That's cool. And I thought that's just that's so funny. That's how connected it is. And that's what the fascia is in our body. Yes. So it's not always where the source of the pain is. It could be somewhere else. That's why often exactly. when you have acupuncture which is very evidence-based that's why insurance covers yeah. it and other things because there's so much research around it that's why when you have tension in your shoulder sometimes they'll go down to your knee or, some or your other shin your or body. your foot yeah exactly and the other thing so that was a perfect way to explain that but then add gravity on top of that so actually going back even further how was fascia discovered it was discovered by a woman named ida rolf in the 1960s she was actually a rocket scientist that was studying how the human body was relating to gravity and in her studies she's the one that discovered fascia now it wasn't until 2007 that the western medicine community finally said wow fascia is a real thing they used to in dissections. A new organ. Yeah, that exactly. Was discovered. <laughs> in dissections, <laughs> until then, they used to literally pull back the skin and the fascia, throw it away to yeah. get into the organs, the bones, and the muscles. So it's pretty fascinating because it's it is really. I mean, now it's 2020, but you know, I mean, that was not that long ago. That now we've been studying it from the medical scientific way, but the holistic world has been embracing fascia and connective tissue for a very long time. Mm, that's why you've seen like other cultures, Chinese Ayurveda, medicine, yeah. Chinese medicine, Absolutely. emphasis on massage mm -hmm. or other things to release that tension that's there. Yeah. So let's just go back to the jaw analogy. Sure. So when, when let's say a dentist who's working with somebody who has TNG yes. and a lot of our listeners can, you know, relate to that and they would say, okay, let's go to a physical therapist and pelvic floor. Yes. When that person comes in, what are you doing now with them? How are you assessing the situation and saying that? If it is a pelvic floor, how do you know that? And what are you deciding to do? Well, for someone, if you went to a pelvic floor specialist for this, you would basically have the person, you look at them walk, you'd watch them in movement, you'd lie, lay them on the table, you'd check their alignment of their pelvis to see if one side is um, anterior tilted, the other side is posterior, it's called a pelvic torsion. So you'd look at the alignment of the pelvis. You'd also look at the adductor tension, the inner thighs. You'd look at the feet, which is fascinating because the feet are connected to the pelvic floor. And also that would relate to the jaw, as we know, as you just mentioned, like the feet are actually connected to the head, you know what I mean, fascially. And so if you're having tension in your head, and that's reflexology too, that's another holistic form of medicine that people have used and believed and trusted for many years. So whenever, and those are, that's fascial related as well. So, you know, you're gonna do that, and then you're gonna also go inside the pelvic floor and feel around and then have people you know, bite their teeth and then squeeze their pelvic floor and see if that chain is stuck, see if it's connected and see if it's clutching subconsciously and then awakening the connection. That's that consciousness. That's the empowerment of connecting to that part of your body neuromuscularly. This is not just like woo woo energy. This is really like turning on the neuromuscular connection from the brain to the body, mm. which is really once it's turned on, then it's going to be on for you forever unless it gets shut off from going into those old patterns. So habitual patterns are really the reason why we get stuck. Mm. And we're going to dive more into that, but I want yeah. to talk a little bit of origin yes. story. Perfect. You know, your story and your journey starts from a young age. Yeah, really young. And you share a story inside the book and you shared it before yeah. on other podcasts about your mom. Talk to us about your origin story. So when I was 16, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. It was stage four of five stages and it was pretty far along. And she was like not very old. She was in her late 40s. And 
we thought it was really bizarre. She was a healthy, vital, she was a model and actress. She was beautiful and radiant. She did yoga. And so I was actually driving her to go get her cancer treatment at Stanford University, which is obviously such an amazing place to be able to go. And I would ask the doctors, so where does cancer come from? What is this all about? And they would say, you know, it's environmental, it's genetic, but really we don't know. And I was actually happy to hear we don't know because to me that made me feel like I could investigate this and go deeper and learn how it manifests in the body. And that's when I started realizing the emotional component of disease, disease. So that's where I realized like I was, you know, working out really hard and competing and eating well. And then I wanted to study nutrition. So I went on this journey. I thought it was actually going to be a registered dietitian nutritionist, but I decided that that was going to be limiting. And so I went on a journey in my 20s and studied a bunch of different modalities. So I first discovered classical Pilates and then Reiki and then Thai yoga massage and um, a little bit of Ayurveda, some cranial sacral. And then I also, that when my life changed really is when I found structural integration, which is Ida Rolf's work. People may have heard of rolfing. Um, it's structural integration is a form of body work where we're working on aligning the tissues and the joints and the system. And then a lot of emotional stuff comes up with that as well, because I believe that trauma lives in the tissue and I've seen it and I've I mean, I don't know if we can scientifically validate it, but we've seen people let go of stuff that they've been carrying, like a bag of coals, for years through releasing through their tissues. Two things on that. Number one, even for people who haven't, who maybe heard of rolfing but haven't had it done, uh, they they just know that it's painful, right? <laughs> well, it's <laughs> and that's funny probably because, emotional pain. Yeah, it can and be also both. physical release mm-hmm. because of exactly what you were saying. Yeah. But why would it be painful? If so the pain that way. so the pain is either it could be the pain was there already people were not tuned into it because of the compression maybe there's a scar tissue piece of not pushing on a nerve um, it's also just again like holding ourselves in certain positions that can make us stuck and sticky and compressed but also fascia becomes I always say aging is a form of dehydration and it's not just how much water you drink your tissue your connective tissue your fascia can actually become dehydrated and brittle and thick and dense you know again from gravity or stress or tension or holding on to emotional stagnant energy like a lot of times people don't realize this but we actually you know let's say we're gonna clutch our arms down if we get a stressful like phone call or something comes up that's stressful in our lives or we're pissed about something or we have resentment or anger and we just subconsciously like squeeze our arms into our sides and then we tense up and then emotional energy gets stuck in the ribs so we can it's okay to have that happen it's just a matter of finding the release and letting it go it's that whole mind body connection it's understanding that this is my survival mechanism yes i'm dealing with a stressful situation or i have some sort of emotional turmoil in my life yes which by the way everyone all of us have you know what i mean life is what it is life has waves so we're all going to be dealing with things that come up and down and it's just more of finding that piece of knowing that we can get through it i was going to my dentist here she's been on the podcast before dr uh rashian she's a biological dentist really amazing amazing here in la and um i went in one day and she was like you know your your teeth are shifting and this is the first time that i'm noticing it like are you clenching your jaw are you grinding grinding your teeth yeah I said, I, I, I didn't notice, but I, I guess that makes sense now because I've also been biting my cheeks a little bit at yeah. night. Yeah, wow. And she's like, I've seen this before. Like, what's kind of going on? And I was like, I'm going through a very stressful situation mm-hmm. right now. Something that I don't find myself in places in my life where I often don't feel like I don't have control of the yes. situation. Yes, yes. And I had an unresolved situation. This was a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. And I just did not feel the control on it. And even though I would still fall asleep at night throughout the night, that yes. hidden tension is finding a way to release itself. It's like working itself out. And that does happen a lot in our sleep. We deal with these things that we're, you know, processing and trying to work through. And so subconsciously you were clutching or biting down and grinding to control it. Because if we don't find another outlet, and then I started doing some massage, started doing more cupping yeah. and acupuncture, that also is a way of that tension releasing and rebalancing yes. 
but there's not the detrimental effects of my teeth shifting and having exactly. to get like Invisalign <laughs> or whatever. Right? I know it's so common. Yeah. I mean, some of, I mean, yeah, of course it's going to be genetic. It's in our DNA, but there are ways to change and shift that with awareness and connection and doing these holistic healing modalities to help release that energy in other ways for sure. So right now we talked about the example we've gone through a few examples but you've actually created a framework around this and you talk about it in your book yes and so you have these key areas of the body in the power source that you mm -hmm. help people identify which are exactly that they're their source of power mm -hmm. and if we can tap in sort of self-diagnose like what's going on yeah. which one of these is not in alignment mm -hmm. then we can actually lean into it and unlock a whole bunch of hidden potential that's there for us. That's right. So let's start off with that. Why okay. did you call it the power source and what, which ones are there? So it's, it's really interesting how this evolved. So working with people hands-on for 20 years, essentially I kept seeing patterns show up. So I would see these areas. I actually originally called them stress containers because they mm -hmm. felt like they were areas of the body where the stress was just getting stuck. You know, accumulated stress that was being held in these stagnation. areas. Yeah, stagnation. So the five areas are the pelvic floor, which is, you know, in many cultures, the root chakra. In ancient wisdom, um, they call it that, which is a whole nother story. But we'll keep going with what these centers are. Because and, Sorry, can I interrupt for one yeah, second? Yeah, please. I actually don't think a lot of people understand what a, what pelvic floor is. Yeah. Okay, right? good. So I sometimes <laughs> say it or people say it at the, you know, like my trainer here in Santa Monica, sometimes we'll tell people like, okay, like clench like your pelvic floor. And they're like, yeah. wait, okay, I think I know what that is. I think I'm not sure. So yes. could you just of break course. it down? I would love that. So it's essentially a hammock of muscles that um, connect your sits bones. So your sitting bones, right? Your, the bottom of your pelvis, your pubic bone and your tailbone. So without that hammock of muscles, think about it. Our organs would just drop out of us, right? So there it's, I like to call it the pelvic core. It's the base of the core. Um, and it's a super important area to have core strength, to also have hip mobility, to have a strong, healthy lower back. It's the foundation of our body. And I mean, obviously, in addition to our glutes and our, and our butt, but it's such an important area of the body because without that connection to it, it can cause a lot of imbalances in the system, like lower back pain, um, inability to have an orgasm or even for men, cause men do have pelvic floors. I do get asked that. Do men have pelvic floors? Which is yes. funny because that's again, the misunderstanding of what a pelvic floor I is. I know. And it's often talked about when For it comes women to women's and health. birth. Because there's so exactly. much more to it than that. So much more. <laughs> um, and it's essentially, for men, they can have premature ejaculation, which is, you know, they're not going to have as much fun between the sheets if they're not connected to their pelvic floor. Sure. Which, I mean, I know it's a little, sounds a little funky to talk about it like that, but that's the reality of being a human being. You know, I mean, that's also where we hold a lot of our creative energy. So if you think about creation, that's where we make you know, our, our sexual organs are there. That's where we have the hormones or, you know, the energy to make make babies. But also it's where creative ideas can come from as well. So connection, creativity, yes, it's sexual energy, but that energy can also be used for connection and charisma. And it's a very powerful energy in the body. And that's why I called them power centers, because instead of looking at it negatively, like, oh, this energy is being stuck here and accumulated. Well, okay, let's let's unfold that or like let's shed some light on what is there and what how can we use that energy to actually be our best self so that was really exciting to be able to bring it to that level and for anybody who's listening especially a lot of guys who maybe feel like okay okay i get pelvic floor yeah. but like what is it if you've ever were urinating in the bathroom yes and you just clench and you stop urinating for a second yep that's part of that muscle region yes and believe it or not people are so disconnected to it that they end up when they squeeze it they're going to use their butt their lower back they're going to mm. use their like rectus abdominis their their abs so really the important thing is to isolate and activate and once you do that you turn on that neuromuscular connection to use it when you need it instead of it being all of these things like a big chunk going together that's the thing about the muscles in the body we want to be able to activate them individually when we need them and integrate them when we need them as well so that's the first one that you mentioned. Yep. Let's and then the, the next others. one, the second center is the gut. So obviously the gut is so important right now. It's connected to the brain with the vagus nerve. Um, a lot of gut issues are showing up in the world right now in the younger generation because they're all in fight or flight and they're, they're holding a lot of emotional energy in. So to me, I was seeing a lot of bloating, um, you know, any sort of IBS, constipation, um, in like inability to connect to the deep core 
because the core I, I always explain the core as like a tree trunk so if you cut a tree and then you see the rings within the tree trunk right to show the age of the tree well that's how the core is it's layers of energy and tissues and organs and bones and then you have your amazing spine and then you have your spinal cord in there and it's such an important area obviously many people believe that it's our second brain and um what happens is a lot of times that stagnant energy gets stuck in the belly in the organs but also in people are over activating their lower back and they're not using their core so this work is really empowering because it helps release a lot of the connective tissue blockages but also helps you reactivate the musculature to support the spinal alignment essentially so energetically emotionally i mean the gut is so powerful and you know I'm, i mean I, i'm sure you guys talk about it a lot on the show yeah we've done a lot <laughs> of things about it but it's good to have it from every perspective yeah. because it speaks to somebody different we often think about um people say in sort of modern culture like trust your gut so yes. much of our intuition that's right and he doesn't make this connection exactly, but in Michael uh, Malcolm Gladwell's book, Blink, Love it. he says, you know, okay, there's our thinking mind, mm -hmm. which can analyze, but there's a deeper awareness that's in our body that allows yes. people that are top performance to, to just instantaneously know what the right decision is in whatever their areas of expertise. Yes, and sometimes the mind gets in the way. So it can be very powerful to connect and to feel those butterflies in your belly again, or to feel when you actually are hungry. You know, we've lost that connection to... Oh, I'm just going to eat because I'm filling a void rather than eating because you're actually hungry. And then the other thing that's really interesting is in my work and in my um, online studio and all the programs that I do or classes that I teach, we do belly rolling with this squishy ball. And the belly rolling is amazing because it helps you drop right into that calmer state of the nervous system because it's teaching your, your belly is speaking to your brain. I can go into calmer state. I can relax, I can let go, I can be present. So it's a very important thing for holistic health, but also it helps decrease that, you know, a lot of people have a gut because they have blocked energy or they have compression. So it's a very amazing thing for obviously the way you look, but the way you feel and the way you function. In, uh, in my background and tradition, which is from India, and mm. my grandmother used to incorporate a lot of different principles of like Ayurveda and stuff. Yeah. One thing that they were really big on is, is I know we're not talking about, we're talking about the gut right now, but you were mentioning the vagus nerve earlier yes. and connecting the brain all the way down to the gut. Is there a big on like vagal stimulation? Oh, big and time. All different, I was having a conversation with my sister about all these things that my grandmother used to teach us. Like she was like, oh, you know, every so often, even if you're not, even if you're not sick, you should gargle or you should yes. do this. Yes, yeah. These are all ways, even like belly and, like, rolling. like vibrates the throat too. Exactly, yeah, belly which stimulates rolling. the vagal nerve. Absolutely. And when we regularly are stimulating our vagus nerve in the right way, we just like you had mentioned we're not always in fight or flight yes. and so belly rolling if i'm understanding it correctly exactly. is one of those examples and it's so phenomenal it takes like a few minutes and it helps improve digestion like i said gets rid of bloating helps us just get more in tune with our belly and our gut and i've I actually have people all over the world doing my programs that have healed themselves from a lot of different issues with the gut so even ibs colitis things like that that are really hard to get to from a western medicine perspective the other thing I'll mention about the gut, because this is definitely my <laughs> I bet. power center that yeah. I have the most tension in, yeah. even as like a kid and other things like that. I was also on a history of like antibiotics a lot as a kid, yeah, for that'll throat, do it, that'll for like sure. decimate your gut, all sorts of other aspects. But um, with, my, with my gut, I know that when I do release work around it, you know, in yoga and other places and meditation class, they're always telling you like, okay, breathe from your belly. Mm -hmm. When you look at a baby, when they're, when they're breathing, their stomach goes up and mm -hmm. down. And sometimes people feel so tight that they feel like, I can't even they're have like stuck my, breathing they're here. stuck breathing yeah. in their chest. Yep. And I know when I do release work in my stomach, belly rolling or whatever else it might be, even just sometimes massage, self-massage, whatever yep. it is, it actually even helps me breathe easier and that I can um, actually breathe no from question. my belly. The breath is so massive and also for the pelvic floor because many people don't realize, but when we breathe in, what naturally happens is our diaphragm pushes down into our organs and then the organs drop down into the pelvic floor and then the pelvic floor opens and expands like a flower. This is just happening subconsciously without knowing. And then as we exhale, everything comes upward and that's what pushes all the air out of the CO2 out of the lungs. 
So it's a really important thing, like you're saying, like breath also needs to go beyond the belly down lower even too. So when we start visualizing that, we become more empowered. We can deal with stress more efficiently. We can regulate our hormones and we can be more calm and just, you know, present. So one of my science teachers in high school said, we don't breathe as much as we just simply expand the container yeah. and then breath goes in. Love that. So if you want to breathe more deeply, just open it, just it up. Open it up. <laughs> that so goes true. right to what you were saying. And that goes to the next power center, actually. Please, yes. So the next power center, the third one, and I do like to work the way up because I believe that we kind of need to start at the base in order for, because if we start in the head, it can be too heady. You know what I mean? We're like right. thinking too much. So the third one is the diaphragm and the lungs. So obviously so important for regulating metabolism. Again, like we just said, dealing with stress. So the diaphragm is also an area that it's a muscle that separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity. If you picture it, if you were like looking above, it looks like an umbrella muscle. It goes all the way through the whole body, right? So through the back of the body, people sometimes just think that they're, they're breathing like in the front, but it's really all the way through the back body, through the back lungs. Um, and so when we breathe in, like I said, the diaphragm will push down. And then as we exhale, the diaphragm will come upward and that's what will wring out that CO2 toxic air out of the body. But many people from our sitting culture are sitting and compressing their diaphragm. And that's our, this is actually our, I like to call this one the power center because this is our personal power. So if we walk into a room hunched over the weight of the world on our shoulders and defeated, we're going to be you know, responded to by whoever we're seeing or meeting differently than if we walk into a room with a nice open heart and an open diaphragm and open lungs, you know, and we're kind of feeling that lightness in our body and our energy. So it's a really important piece because I think people don't realize, again, our fascial matrix will glue us into that hunched over posture if we don't realize we're there. So it's important because it's going to slow down metabolism because breath is how we actually really fire up our metabolism that's why people love to go running and they get that that runner's high right they get the endorphins and the serotonin they're using their lungs well there's ways to do that without just going for a run you can just do breath work you can do you know aligning your your spine and getting your just sitting in your in your in your um, chair at your office you can actually line yourself up and breathe more efficiently and that helps because a lot of people don't realize but the way we lose fat in our body is it's converted to co2 so we lose fat through our breathing rather than from our sweat isn't that interesting that's scientifically validated yeah, no, cnn definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it's on cnn there's many articles but um i think that's really interesting and obviously for an energetic perspective i've worked with a lot of pro athletes in my in my past as well and they love it because it enhances their vo2 intake it improves their ability to recover more quickly and it also helps them be more um, efficient just in all of their aspects and it regulates your hormones too when you breathe better also, like our center of gravity is like a little bit above our core, right? Yeah, like exactly. it's kind of like right in that region. And when you were saying, when we talk about like being thrown off in life, thrown off by the media, thrown off by other influence, mm -hmm. other things, other ideas, other people's things, I often see it as we're losing our center. We don't I know where that. we're at. That's and great. Anytime we're on unstable ground, it's easier for us to be thrown off. Yes. So if we're not connected to that power center and our yes. actual physical center of gravity, yes. it's going to be easier for us to be thrown off our goals, influenced by other thoughts, and we're falling into other people's priorities, ideas, positions, rather than where we really want to be. Yeah, and the best thing we can do on the planet to make it better is be the best version of ourselves. You know, it's so simple. It's like then we become a victim and we become in that fear mode and that's only going to do more of what the negative energy wants us to do, right? The dark energy or whatever. So I think what you said is perfect because as long as we can continue, like it's like it's always going to be like riding those waves. But if we can continue to come back to our grounded energy, feel the earth under us, take a deep breath, relax the pelvic floor, feel the upright energy in our spine and our head, then we're going to be able to be more clear and connected to ourselves. And then we will know where to go on our path. So that's what this center is about. It's about, are we walking on our true path? Are we being our best authentic version of ourself so that we can serve the world or, you know, the community or the consciousness? So, so I want to pause on going to the next ones mm -hmm. for one second real quick. And something you said made me think, 
like a lot of things, the first step is awareness. Yep. And we had a mutual friend of ours, dear mutual friend, Peter Crone. Love him. Connect He's the us. Best. Yeah. And so thank you and shout thank out to you, Peter. Peter. If you haven't listened to his episode. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. It's worth it's listening to. It's been shared so many times. Shared so, so, so cool. many times. Episode number 55. But <laughs> in that episode, when we were asking Peter, like, okay, these are a lot of really amazing things. How do we start? He said, you know, it's really about awareness. Yes. It's the toughest thing and it's the most straightforward thing. And I'm hearing parallels in this conversation here that part of what you're saying is actually doing an inventory. Like our listeners right yes. now who are listening, yes. we still have a few more centers to go. Right. But is it that? Is it sort of taking an inventory right now and sort of seeing where you stand in your body and what the state of the union is? Absolutely. I mean, that's that's the beauty of having these five centers to share with people is they can all assess themselves easily. It's self, I say, I've been called the body whisperer, but I want everyone to become their own body whisperer. And that's the, to me, that's the bridge to becoming the best version of themselves. I say, align your body, align your life. And that means every aspect of your life. You're gonna make better choices with food. You're gonna make better choices with relationships, with what job you take. If you're more in tune with who you are and your authentic purpose, and that's what it is. It's about graceful power. It's not about trying to abuse power or control because that's really masculine and that's too much force. So really we're looking to find that connection and that balance of the yin to the yang, the doing and the being. And it's never going to be perfect, right? It's never like, oh, we're all of a sudden one day we're like perfectly balanced. Like sometimes we have to get up and force things a little more and sometimes we have to let it happen and surrender. It's that about surrender. having access to that range. Yes. Sometimes. Uh, there and was, letting uh, it go. Yeah. <laughs> This is a teacher, uh, spiritual teacher in, here in LA. And one time I was telling him, I was like, yeah, you know, I got to make this happen. And I get to, I'm going to make this happen. And he's like, Hey man, listen, it's like making it happen is one thing. Yeah. We can make it happen. We can let it happen and we can watch it happen. Those are Ooh, all forces. That's amazing. I love life. that. That's we don't always have flow. to make it happen. Yeah. We can do these other aspects. And that's part of what you're saying. It's not that we can't use sometimes this rallying call of like, okay, I just got to do this thing. But if that's our only trick or our only tool in the toolbox, that's when we get out of balance. Exactly. And like, you know, we have to get up in the, get up in the morning, get out of bed, get ready, make food. Like those are all like doing things. And then we have to make sure we have time to be with, be with ourselves, be quiet, listen, tune in, even if it's for like one minute or two minutes or five minutes, like those minutes are going to make such a massive impact on your life and what you're choosing and how you live your life when you just take the, the that time to tune into that awareness so let's move on to the next yes locations in the body so now we're making our way up to the fourth center this is the heart center the heart and the shoulder so i feel like this is the one that most people can really feel because everyone has some sort of scar tissue or knots in their shoulders so you know we like to say it's the weight of the world on our shoulders um but also a lot of people get shut down. Or they have a broken heart or, you know, something they're holding some burden in their heart. A lot of times we hold resentment in our heart area as well. So many <clears throat> people are hunched over. And again, from modern society and culture, we're just in that hunched over position. So that creates that stagnation and creates compression and density and thickness. And then we build this armor within our fascia in our connective tissue that sort of dries up and then holds us into those positions. So this area is obviously super important because it's also how we're going to be of service to the world and also how we're going to give and receive love. So this area is one of those areas. I mean, it's the heart. It's all about love. So it's obviously probably the most important one because if we're not connected to that, then isn't that what Peter says too? It's like that is exactly what we all really want on the planet is more love. And it's also self-love. Yes. Because giving and receiving. Giving and receiving and just our own self. You know, the Acceptance. people that are regularly hard on other people or... You are, know they're doing that to themselves. They're doing it to themselves. For sure. I had a podcast a few weeks ago to kick off the new year. Uh, and I was talking about nine things we do regularly to avoid our goals and dreams in life. Oh my God, that's good. And the last one that I had wow. talked about is that if you do this regularly, this is a good way to avoid your goals and dreams <laughs> is to <laughs> be good. hard on yourself. Oh and yeah. And so sometimes you hear people saying like, they, they, you know, you mentioned that a lot of people can feel it. And I think that there are also a lot of people who feel shut down. Yeah, you're right. And they don't know if they can feel it or if yeah. they can't feel that area. And they think that love is so either feminine or yeah. it's so this, there's this 
but it's this powerful thing. It's the empathy that we also have for yes. ourselves. Yes. It's the appreciation and the caring the same way that you would look af after a child to treat yourself like that and the other people around yourself. And when you yes. do that, you can step into your goals and dreams and actually make progress on the things in your life that you want to make progress on. Oh, it's so true because yeah, we're all going to have lessons and things to learn and maybe we made a mistake or maybe we made a decision that we wish we hadn't. But I think the beauty of it is knowing that everything happened for a reason and we're exactly where we're supposed to be at this moment. And that's that acceptance. And, you know, I think there's a lot of power with love. And I don't think that, like you said, I think the masculine, you know, world that we've been living in for many years, very male dominant, has sort of ingrained that into our bodies and our minds. And even men haven't been able to really feel like they can cry or be vulnerable. I mean, vulnerability is a superpower, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> is there a personal anecdote out of out of the ones that you've shared so far, uh, is there a personal anecdote that you have about being a little bit of stagnation, even though you practice this, you live this, you oh, yeah. teach this to other people? And is there one about love? You know, before we started recording, we were talking about relationship. Yes. And oh, I, I was it. asking about your, your relationship and how you guys met. Yeah. And your husband, I didn't catch his name. Gus. Gus. Yes. And uh, we were both sharing how we met our partners through... Uh, friends and everything like yeah. that. Was that ever an area that you had to give special attention to in your life? Oh, absolutely. Actually, before I met him, so that was when I was 32, um, I was actually married to my college sweetheart. So I met him at UC Santa Barbara when I was 19 and was with him for 10 years. And we definitely went through a lot together. He was an alcoholic and mm. he did drugs and um, it was a very toxic relationship. And during that relationship, my lower back was hurting all the time. I was in so much pain. My jaw was so tight. I was so inflexible. I'd try to go to like a yoga class and I couldn't touch my toes. And I was so in fight or flight. I was in survival mode. I was clutching. My tissue was holding trauma inside and I was just bearing down and just trying to white knuckle my way through life. And so again, I think we, in order to have mastery of something, we have to go through it ourselves and sort of learn and grow. And so that was the biggest learning lesson because my heart was so shut down and I didn't even really believe that there was something like real unconditional love available. So we ended up splitting our ways and I was like, my mom actually passed away right at the same time that my divorce was final. And I decided to write a list. So I wrote a list and I write about this in the book too, of basically who I wanted to manifest. I know manifest is like overused that word, but I, I basically wrote the list of the perfect um, partner that I wanted to find or, or bring into my life. And when I was writing this list, I'm telling you, Drew, I did not believe this human existed on the planet. Like I was like, there's no way this he's way too perfect. He's for me. It's not about perfection, but like just matching kind of new what Having I wanted. all these traits or character traits in one person. Yeah. And just knowing, like, I think also being in that toxic, unhealthy relationship, I really learned what I didn't want. And then I realized what I wanted. So, you know, sometimes we have to go that way in order to know what we really want. So I wrote that list. And then a year later, we were introduced on a blind date. And it turns out he had written a list a year before as well. So that's why I wrote about it in the book, because I just think it's really fascinating. That's energy, that's you know, energy. <laughs> and I know we're going to get into like what people can do for all yes, these areas. Yes. And we've been kind of weaving that in. But was there, I, you know, it's not a one to one connection that, you know, rolling your tummy <laughs> led to you finding the perfect mate, but right. I'm sure there was things that you were doing regularly to kind of, and it was over a time and a spectrum and everything yes. transitioning from, because a lot of people can relate a relationship ending yes. or a breakup or being in the wrong situation or the wrong business partner, whatever it might be. And was there anything physical that you were doing at that time that you're giving love to, to address those areas that had stagnation? Oh, that's a great question. Actually, you're such you're so good at your questions. So good. Thank you. Um, no, actually, I think, yeah, I had to really do some self deep work. And during this time was when I discovered this work of structural integration. And it, they make you go through all of your cobwebs, like clearing out all of your things, all of your excuses, like you were saying earlier, like what are the things that block us from getting and achieving what we desire? So we had to do a full, like, again, if we do this work and teach this work and, you know, do the hands-on work and take people through this process, we have to do it too, or else we can't hold the space for it. So I had to go on my own. Yeah. That you're talking so about? it's okay. a school in Laguna Beach. It's called the New School of Structural Integration. There were 10 of us in the school. It's a two-year program. And we spend a lot of time together and we break down any excuse we've ever come up with. Like any time we've ever felt like a victim, we had to break that down. 
um, every relationship we've been in or with and like anything where we're sort of be, that victim mentality, that's the thing I had to like release basically fully. And that's what I saw my mom be when she was sick. She was much more of a victim energy of like, why did this happen to me? You know, that energy of is not empowering. So I did my own process. Could, yeah, of and course. And she didn't have the tools, but that's the place that she was stuck in. And I actually really honestly like honor that she went through that because I got to witness that and learn from it. So I'm like, thank you for letting me witness that. I'm not, I'm not like mad at her be, for being that. It was like, wow, this is evolution. This is what humans are supposed to do. We learn from our, you know, parents and hopefully grow and evolve. Yeah. And when you were talking about getting and addressing all those excuses yes was it a combination of like because we've had many people come on the podcast talk about how a lot of times we think emotions start in the brain but they actually start in the body first and yes. then our brain interprets them exactly like that's a few so well milliseconds said. later that's right so a lot of emotions actually come from our body so when you guys were breaking down these excuses yes and really looking at them was it a combination of sort of verbally talking about them, but also then physically letting go in the body? That's right. That's why I like to call my method movement medicine, because essentially we're, we don't even have to talk about it. Sometimes we do, but it's not, sometimes the talking can keep us too much in the head. We can get stuck in we the intellectual stuck, structure. And then we can't release it. And then we right. get stuck in the story around it and the critical mm. mind of it and the judgment of it. Instead of just moving the energy through the systems, through breathing, through moving through, walking through, being in nature, you know, that forest bathing, doing something like that, that helps us release all of this stuff. So for me, the, a lot of, the first session I had with my teacher down there in Laguna, I had, it was like a two hour session and I got off the table and I thought, I just had 10 years of physical therapy and 10 years of mental like therapy as well. I was like, what just happened to me? And then that's when I decided I had to learn this, the method and the, me and the message and the program. So that was pretty massive for me. And also to do that work myself, I would have never been at the vibration to meet my husband now if I hadn't done that work. Mm. So I really, I have a lot of gratitude for that other relationship too. And for, I mean, that's the thing, like it's all about, none of it was wrong. It was all right. Cause it got me here and now. Right. So it wasn't wrong. And then when it stopped working for you, you had to move on, but, but it that, still wasn't wrong. And that's the key right there because that's the awareness. And that's the body has so much wisdom. The cells have this innate wisdom that we just don't listen to in our society and our culture. So that's my mission is to help people awaken that. This Basically, it's, it's body intelligence, mm -hmm. awakening body intelligence to learn how to make better decisions, better choices, and live a more just joyful life and we feel it on a micro level we all know that when we walk it's easier to clear our head yeah and talk yeah. about things it's easier to figure things out when we move if we haven't exercised in a while or had movement in our life and then we do it and we're like oh my gosh i feel amazing yes why haven't i done this recently it's not true and i mean movement is therapy movement it's is, literally therapy it really yeah. is therapy and you know you talk about how the fascia and how the lymphatic uh, fluid yeah. is, um, can you describe that exactly as like the lymph lymph system, is it weaved into the fascia or it's right underneath it? It's actually within the matrix of it. So okay, the it. lymph nodes, yes. right? And then yep. there's the, the fluid that's flowing through. So if people don't know what the lymph system is, many people do now and it's becoming much more of a topic. It's essentially the garbage disposal of the body. So it's, it's the hospital systems of the body. Yeah. And we have... I think more lymphatic fluid in our body than we have blood. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. I mean, and it's also super important for the immune system, again, for gut health, for our body to be able to detoxify. There's a lot more environmental toxins in our world now that we live in. So we need to be a little more responsible for our limb system. So whenever we work with the fascial matrix or the fascial system or the fascial organ, you're working with the limb system. So and you're getting compression and that's basically moving the lymph through. Yeah. Because the blood has the heart, the, the heart has the blood has the heart to pump mm -hmm. and move it through but the only way the lymphatic system and the lymphatic fluid in our body moves is through movement that's right so actually when we say that sometimes we feel stuck in life or we feel compressed or down or we're just not 
flowing and stagnated, yeah. we actually might be. We may not be moving. Mm-hmm. We may not be moving that lymphatic fluid inside of our body, exactly. which requires us to contract our muscles, move our lymphatic tissue, release tension, and that's where a lot of the opening comes from. It's huge. It's really massive. And it also helps people like, you know, even lose weight and bloating. And um, again, like the other way we can really get the lymph going is doing going upside down. Right. So doing inversions also really moves the lymph as well. It's really important for the body. So let's continue. There's a couple more centers. Yep. One more. Talk about. One more. So it's the head, neck and jaw. So this is the one we were saying, like if we're too stuck in our head, we're going to be processing a lot up here. We're going to be stuck. We're going to be probably clutching our jaw a bit. And there's also what I find very fascinating is in our skull, we have sutures, right? And within those sutures, they actually get can get very compressed and tight. But if you're breathing healthfully and you're not stuck in fight or flight all the time, then your sutures, every time you breathe in, the sutures of your skull will actually open and expand and then they will close as you exhale. This is a very subtle thing. It goes again with the cerebral, it's the cerebral spinal connection, right? So it's the cerebral spinal fluid. So actually this is a good one where we can bring up the nervous system. Real quick, actually. Yeah. I'm not familiar with the term sutures. So could you describe? Oh, sorry. So the sutures of the skull are like, okay, you know how in the pelvis, um, you know, like the pelvis bone is like multiple bones, but mm-hmm. kind of sutured yep. together. Yep. Got so it. the skull is like that too. So yeah. there's it's actually not like little one bones. Skull. It's like a bunch of little bones. It's actually bones. a bunch of little bones that fit together like a puzzle. Right. Okay. And so within and they those expand sutures, and contract. yes. And so that's really important because that allows. So every time you breathe, right? Basically, what's happening is you're going to take a deep breath. Let's do it. Take a deep breath into your pelvis. And then you'll feel your pelvis will move slightly and then your cranial bones will slightly open as well. Again, this is so subtle, but this is scientifically validated. And that is actually what pumps the cerebral spinal fluid, that's the fluid inside your spinal cord, to the brain to feed the brain nutrients. And then it also flushes the brain of toxins. So you can imagine how important that is for obviously being healthy, but also regulating your hormones, regulating your nervous system, not being stuck in survival all the time and opening up that creative energy too. So there's also a lot of tension that builds up around the eyebrows, in the inner ears, inside the um, the nose as well, inside the sinuses and around the back of the jaw and then the, the base of the skull as well. So a lot of people will sit with their head forward and then that tightens the neck where the neck attaches to the occipital bone the base of your skull and then that fascia will glue you into this position and then your head's forward and you're trying to sit at your desk and then your head's heavy right it weighs like 30 pounds so if your head's forward like that guess what's going to hold your head up your jaw Mm -hmm. so your jaw bites down to basically hold yourself up so that's why it's so important to really align the neck and also keep circulation and blood flow and as we know when we're addressing one power center we're addressing all of them yeah, because when you align your neck, you have to have your shoulders back. Yeah. Which also keeps your 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 heart and That's your chest right. forward. And your belly open. And your core. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So it's the subtle things that make a huge impact. It's the subtle shifts of awareness and connection. And it's not like you have to go to a two-hour yoga class to realign yourself. You could take a few deep breaths. You could go for a five-minute walk around the office. You could go get some fresh air. You could just do it, you know, some some little stretches in your chair. I, I actually do stuff even on the airplane, like, because you know, on the airplane, you're, it's this little position. That's why I've created these tools that people can take with them and travel with them and keep circulation going. And it's really interesting because it's, it's not for one demographic. It's really for everyone. Speaking of tools, you gave me something before we started the podcast. <laughs> I know. Can you feel it? It's good, for right? For those that are watching the video, I'll just hold it up in front of <laughs> yes, you. Yes, we're both uh, using them. It basically looks like a half... Uh, we call it the dome. The dome. Yeah. It's got some spikes on it. Yep. It's about the size of a small watermelon. Mm-hmm. Half of a watermelon. Yeah, totally. So describe what this An is. An organic watermelon. <laughs> organic, organic watermelon. Uh, describe what this is and how you use this. You're talking about subtle tools. Yeah. How do you use this tool? So the work. great thing is this almost has a little bit of acupressure in it. So you can sit on it. It also helps flush the lymph. You can put it behind your shoulder blades. Um, my husband loves to drive with it or he takes it with him on airplanes when he's traveling a lot. You put it between your shoulder blades or at your lower back, your sacrum to keep your pelvis balanced. Um, you can put it in your car when you're driving. But basically the little points 
are bringing in circulation and blood flow and that's going to break that thickness and density that builds up and it's also going to move the stagnation in that in the part of the body you're pr putting the pressure on because it's not a flat surface you're not just putting a flat surface against the back of a chair yeah. you kind of have these little points that are creating a little bit of movement in there yeah it's movement but also the pressure like you can see i was doing it on my hand there it's actually you can see all that blood coming in right yeah. so it's fresh oxygenated blood and that's the thing about i mean you know about acupuncture and chinese medicine and ayurveda it's like the whole idea is is getting things moving getting the congestion to flow through so i think many of us are really congested in our connective tissue because of the way we sit and the way we don't move energy as much as we used to maybe in the paleo days and so that's why it's important to have tools that you can access even for a few minutes here and there or do it while you're multitasking, while you're writing or, you know, like we are right now speaking together and sitting in chairs, but at least we're getting a little circulation and blood flow. You can do um, a lot of work in the hips and lower back. You can do stuff in the shoulders. You can do the lower legs, which is amazing if you're a runner. Um, they're great for athletes, but also just for desk jockeys too. When you look out at what everybody's, you know, different people have different centers that they have more of a challenge with. Yes. But let's talk about with our modern culture and how much we all sit for work. And yeah. that's kind of the nature of the game that we're in. Mm -hmm. Taking breaks is super important. Yep. But what are some hacks separate from the dome yeah. that people can bring into their life to deal with the modern world that we're living in, specifically when it comes to sitting and computer time? Well, the key really, whenever people say, I have tightness, I have tension, I'm like, okay, it's all about the nervous system. So the nervous system, you know, you probably talked about this so many times on the show, but essentially it has two different states. It has the sympathetic state, which is about survival, stress, running away from the lion, right? And then you have the parasympathetic state, which is about rest, digest, and heal. So the key to the tissue being healthy and balanced is connecting to the nervous system so the ways that we can do that are through meditation through breath work through infrared saunas through getting really good sleep um, drinking bone broth is amazing for your connective tissue it also helps heal your gut it's really it's a phenomenal i call it a fascia food so whenever we're dealing with our fascia we're dealing with our sensory organ or our nervous system because our nerves lie in the fascia so whenever we start doing self-massage or body work or acupuncture or any sort of healing modality, right away we go into that parasympathetic state of the nervous system, rest, digest, and heal. So we need to be getting more into that state as humans in our culture and society. So to me, that's where we have to start. Now, in addition to that, we can do things for our body mechanics as well. So we can, like you said, get up every hour. We can just reach our arms up. We can just do a few little twists to wring out the organs a little bit. We can just do some head rolls, neck rolls, shoulder rolls, sitting at our desk. Um, again, it just becomes something where you want it to be, it's going to be hard in the beginning because the first thing you have to do is become aware of it. The second thing you have to do is start doing it as a pattern. And then it becomes just part of who you are and you just do it like naturally, like you know, I'll be, I'll be in the shower and I'll give myself a little jaw massage in the shower or I'll... Oh, that's a great tip. It's amazing. You can do like a little scalp massage for yourself. That's another Ayurvedic thing. Or a face massage. Um, many people are using the gua sha tool to release stress in their jaw as well. Do you know what that is? Is it like the Korean tool? Yeah, like it's been facial? around forever. Yeah. They call it... They actually call it body scraping, which is a terrible name. But... It sounds way better to call it gua sha, but they do it for the face. But you can also do it on your body as well. Yeah, it's like a roller. Yeah, it's a roller, but they have one that's like, it looks like almost like a weapon. And you oh, okay, push into it. the fascia and you can do that on your forearms, your traps, you can do your arms. Anything we can do to get circulation and blood flow. Because really what we need is the fascia needs compression in order for the new blood to come in. So that could be through yoga, stretching, rolling, breathing. I also recommend bouncing on a trampoline, a little rebounder is phenomenal for the lymph system. It also helps clear blocked energy. It's great for pelvic floor regeneration and building the strength of the pelvic floor and strengthening the, um, the core as well. And again, flushing the lymph and releasing energy, it also helps build bone density. So it's all about movement to release the energy that's stuck and stagnant. Whatever, whatever kind of movement you enjoy, I think is really the most important thing too. Dance is amazing, working the body and all the different planes of movement too. Like not doing linear things like i'm not a fan of like spinning because you're sitting on a bike i mean maybe some spin teachers will get you off and 
move you around a bit. But I'm a believer in working all the different planes of the body, like twisting, inverting, side bending, extending, flexing, working all those different areas of the body is how we clear it. It's essentially, I like to explain it, it's almost like flossing. So you know how we get plaque on our teeth. So you go to the dentist and they're like, oh yeah, we need to get this plaque. It's it's in there. You need to floss a little more. Well, essentially like when we work with our fascia, we're flossing our fascia. So it's like, it's stress hygiene. It's something that needs to be done almost daily to really be healthy and vital, but it doesn't have to be a major commitment. It could be five minutes, but it's the stagnant energy where we don't move it and move our body in all those different ways. That's when the stuff gets stuck. And you have, you know, so much of uh, throughout the history of exercise and the exercise movement, which started around like the late 70s, mid 70s, yep. um, maybe early 70s. And so much of exercise was associated with calories in and calories out. Yes. Weight loss, right. Yeah. And really in this new modern movement that we have around exercise, it's a lot more about strength. It's a lot yeah. more about you're starting to see a lot more conversations around mobility. Definitely. And then some people like yourself, there's still a few, yes. but you guys are spreading the word. And mm-hmm. so it's changing out there. It's the emphasis on fascia and movement and really freedom, right? Yes. Body freedom. It's true. Yeah. And you have a bunch of techniques on the website. You have like an online gym. Yeah. Where you talk about online, this. I call it the Align Life Studio. Yeah. We have sequences and people, we have like, oh my gosh, it must be... So, I mean, like hundreds of sequences on there now for it's the, the, it's sectioned into sweat, calm and heal. So whatever your body, whatever you you need that day. A lot of people like the sweat cause they want to move the energy through. Calming is great when you want to get into that parasympathetic state of the nervous system and clear the energy. And then obviously healing, we have stuff for lower back, jaw, tension, belly stuff. A lot of the belly rolling shoulders, you know, weight of the world on the shoulders. I mean, it just goes on and on. So I feel really lucky because I get to go into my creative energy and create these programs for people. Yeah. And the reason I brought it up is that the evolution of training and gyms or doing anything at home or workouts yep. is we're going away from just thinking about calories because yes. that model has been kind of been disproven. Yeah. It's not yeah. about calories in and calories right. out. It's about the quality of those calories and other aspects of it. And there's so many other uh, dimensions to to weight loss that's there, emotional release, other yeah. components. But it's like the m- idea of fitness and movement and workouts is evolving into, I think of your work as, okay, how do you feel? How do you wanna feel? Now yes. you have tools that are there mm-hmm. that allow you to feel that. Instead of just thinking, yes, you'll improve your strength too, because that's part of it. Yeah. But instead of just thinking, how can I burn calories? It's like, how do I wanna feel? Yes. And if I want to feel differently than I feel right now, if I feel stuck in my life and I want to make progress on a creative pursuit that I have or some goals that are there, if I feel stuck, okay, where in my body do I feel stuck? Great. Here are some movements, tools, techniques to be able to do that. It's so true. And really, you know, I love that you brought up the whole thing about the calories because I mean, honestly, like abs are made in the kitchen, let's face it. And so if we want to be more, you know, like sculpted and toned, that's going to come with how we eat. And so the way we can get to that is through dealing with our nervous system and our stress because we, we overeat when we're stressed. So if we can get our bodies to a more calm state, we are going to make way better choices. We're going to be more tuned in to what our body really needs. So I like to believe, I believe in intuitive eating, meaning like you just know what you need. You can feel it because you feel it in your gut or you feel it in your mind and you know what your body needs. Like sometimes maybe I feel like I need a little red meat, even though I'm mostly plant-based every once in a while maybe during that time of the month I want a little bit of red meat because I'm losing blood so I just know I'm like oh that just sounds good that's a craving that I have and I'm going to listen to that so I think getting our bodies to the place of feeling again more that's how we're going to become more of the physical body that we maybe aspire to and really that physical body is aesthetically pleasing but it's also functional as well like we're not really supposed to be carrying a ton of weight around because that puts a lot of pressure on our organs our heart I mean, some people maybe are, but you know what I mean? Like where we're coming into our natural, like homostasis of like balance, where where we are our healthiest version of ourself. Does that make sense? Absolutely makes sense. (laughs) So you talked about fascia foods. Yes. And you mentioned one, which was collagen and bone broth. Bone broth. Bone broth. Yeah, I'm sure you guys talk about that a bit too. What are some other, besides water and keeping ourselves (laughs) hydrated, which you can't talk about that enough. I know, Uh, so true. What are some other things that you consider to be 
fascial foods? Well, definitely good omega-3 fats or healthy fats like avocados, coconut mana, coconut oil are phenomenal for that as well. And then foods with antioxidants, that's going to help feed your fascia as well. And also um, magnesium is a big one. I'm a huge fan of magnesium. You know, they call it the, what do they call it? The miracle mineral. So because it also affects your nervous system. So when you take it before bed, I like to take it in powder form. I think it's more bioavailable. And then you go to sleep, you're going to sleep deeper and you're going to be more, you're going to be able to unwind more at night when you go to sleep because your body is going to go deeper into those, you know, REM sleep to heal and restore and rejuvenate your system. We had a friend of ours, uh, Sean Stevenson from the oh, Model yeah. House show. Yeah. He was on the podcast and he was saying, you know, because he's a sleep expert and talks a lot oh, about that. Love it. He says, you know, magnesium is core to over 320 functions inside the body. So when you are depleted in magnesium, oh, that's God, 320 that's things that are either not happening or not happening as well yes. because you don't have a lot of magnesium that's there. It's so true. And for your connective tissue, also when you're not, if you get sore a lot, let's say with your workouts or whatever you're doing to, you know, be an athlete, it means that you're a mineral deficient as well. So taking the magnesium can help you have more endurance, help your body restore. I mean, I even recommend like magnesium baths. There's magnesium chloride flakes that you can put in your bath and then your your um, skin will absorb that as well and that goes into your tissue that's why people love to take baths like before they're going to have a big event the next day or after to prevent soreness and lactic acid buildup and you were men mentioning taking something before night is that like natural calm or do you yeah like i like the form? the new one it's called simple calm simple because calm. natural calm was bought by cl like Clorox or something so I'm oh, like really? okay let's go back let's go to Simple Calm which they have you can order it on Amazon too so, so this is a different company it's yeah, called it's Simple Calm yeah Simple Calm it's the same thing I love the powder form I mean I know many people take it in pill form too which is fine but I, I just I feel like I'd rather take it as a as a powder than a pill so but also like hyaluronic acid is really good for your skin and tissues you can take that as a supplement um saw palmetto is really good for your skin so you can take that as a supplement um like I said, the fats are really important, I think, again, for brain health as well, but also for tissue health and skin health. We need those fats. And, you know, our world is, I mean, now people are on it. But I think, you know, for a long time, people were doing the fat-free thing. And that was creating more sugar in the system. And that was making people more acidic. And then they wanted more sugar. And that was not healthy for the body. So low, low sugar is great for the tissue as well for decreasing inflammation. Um, getting a lot of zinc is very helpful. Obviously, tons of greens, great for the connective tissue health. Um, and I do believe a little bit of animal protein um, in small amounts is healthy for that as well. But I know there's a lot of people that are going plant-based, which is fine. And I totally believe that if that's what works for your body, that's great. So you can do mineral broths, which are really good, again, to... Again, we're mineral f deficient too. So anything we can do to get the minerals up in the body is going to really help with that recovery. I want to go back to the first power center that we were talking about. Yes, please. And talk about something that you address inside your book, which is becoming more and more common, unfortunately, these days, is our relationship with pelvic floor and uh, people experiencing sometimes like painful uh, intimacy. Yes. Right? Oh, it's so common. And I recently... Uh, put out like a, a text message number where people can text questions or things that they want to oh, put in cool. for the podcast. Yeah. And a few women had asked us to cover this cool. topic that's there. That's great. So what can we help? What can you help our listeners understand about sometimes how the source of, of somebody's experiencing painful sex and that yes. puts them in a place where they don't really want intimacy from with a partner or that sort of thing. What connection and understanding and how can you unravel that topic for our listeners? I know. And it actually, it can happen even to women before having babies. Because a lot of times people will think, oh, that's from like the healing after having a baby. But it can be something in the younger generation as well. And so, again, that comes from living in that state of fight or flight, constantly clutching down there, bearing down. It's locking. It's literally locking. It's closing in. And so the, the human is stuck in that subconscious clutch. There could be trauma. There could have been sexual trauma at some point in, in the person's life. And that is obviously going to be stuck in the tissues down there as well. The, like I said earlier, the trauma can actually get locked in the connective tissues. So that's a really empowering thing because at least you know that that can move through. So, you know, you can go to a pelvic, pelvic floor 
specialists that can go up all the way in to help open you up. You can also meditate, visualize. I have guided visualizations that I've done that go with the book as well to help people just, I talk through the anatomy, the physiology, what's going on in that particular power center to really help people visualize. Because I find that when people can see it in their mind, then they can actually make it happen or change things inside their bodies as well. I mean, that's kind of been totally proven, right? That if we mentally think it or visualize it, it will most likely happen or happen close to that. So having that visualization is really helpful to help people unwind. It's really, it's this, it's this really just wound up energy that gets stuck down there. And that's what creates the tension because any time something is entering, it's just closing down and wanting to lock down. So we need to think of the pelvic floor like a flower. Okay. So many people that are stuck in, you know, this sort of clutched position, it's like a rosebud. Okay. So the rosebud is stuck. It's, it's tight and it's not going into the flower and blooming. So again, the breath work is going to be powerful for this too. Breathing in deep is going to open the flower. Um, sitting on the ball, the body sphere, which I have designed that goes along with the book, will help people start, again, neuromuscularly reconnecting to this part of our body to open the flower. So you're doing visualizations, you're doing actual like self body work with the ball, um, stretching the inner thighs, getting into working with the feet a little bit, even rolling the feet with the, you know, the certain tools that you can roll your feet with. That will all start helping that kinetic chain to start unwinding and rebalancing. And again, the jaw. So opening and massaging the jaw, getting connected to your jaw, relaxing your tongue away from the roof of your mouth will actually affect your pelvic floor and the belly, the belly. I mean, all of it, like all the centers affect all of them. Yeah. So, but especially this is scientifically proven the jaw and the pelvic floor they're finding are so much more connected than we realized even a few years ago. So that is a really great entryway to start waking up and sort of creating that space because essentially what it is is you know this sort of bearing down white knuckling closing in and our body is asking for expansion that's all it wants it wants expansion so using those visualizations that the pelvic floor is a flower I love that it's a blossoming flower and it's amazing I teach classes and women are like wow that made such a difference I can really feel it I can feel it opening and then when they add the breath to it and understand what's happening in their physical body and their physiology when they are breathing. They're like, oh, now I can think about that. And like, that's part of me now. Does that make sense? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I want to talk about, you know, we're talking about the body and reconnecting to the body. And there's a lot of, I, you know, there's a lot of people out there that say that there's a growing trend of sort of not accepting our bodies mm. where, we wish our body was different. There's more comparative visualizations, whether it's on social media yes. or in out there. It didn't start with social media. I think social media gets a lot of blame. It's probably been around as long as mass media has been around because we can only I compare know, ourselves right? to the it's people so that true. have been out there. Yeah. What would you say for anybody who's listening here who's having a hard time stepping into the acceptance and the love of their body as it is right now yeah i mean i think if that when that happens when that step happens then everything else starts to unfold because the acceptance is also key in the healing as well because the acceptance is also just the sense of allowing right so i'm gonna like would i rather just walk into a room and be the best version of myself or would i walk into the room like trying to like hide myself and people will do that you'll see it i mean i watch people walking down the street all the time like you can tell they're trying to coil in and hide themselves and that's just not accepting who they are where they are at this moment so the self acceptance and then beyond that the gratitude for for this miraculous body that we've been given like just to be here on planet earth this is a freaking miracle you know so i think tuning into the gratitude of being healthy, of being able to get up every day, to be able to walk down the street. I mean, then, you know, starting to look at how great we really have it, living in this country, the freedom we have, the choices we have. Like, I think turning it around on that and realizing how empowered we really are just living in America right now. I mean, I know there's a lot of stuff going on in this country, but really when it comes down to it, to our daily 
like looking at the bright side, looking at the positive, and then you're like, wow. And then when you, when you start doing that, then what starts happening is you start shedding those layers. Whatever you are holding or carrying around starts shedding and letting go because you're not trying to hold it all together. And sometimes if people are not accepting their body, it could be old ideas or voices they heard when they were a kid, somebody saying something yep. about their body yep. or what they would compare out there. And then that might be stored in one of those power centers. That's right. And doing some work on it. Exactly. Could, a physical release relates to an emotional release. You got it. That's the mind and body, right? They say that the emotion, the emotions live in the body. And so if we can connect to what those emotions are and then release them, then we become lighter in every way. So whether that's lighter weight wise or lighter energetically, and then we just start feeling like we're again on our authentic path and living our purpose. But you're right. The body thing is interesting because it has, I like where we're going with it all. Now the media is now opening up to that. Every body type can be healthy. You know what I mean? And not just one little body type where it fits into this mold. So I do believe that we have, we've made a shift. Yeah. And I'm happy about that. So it's beautiful. Hmm. Lauren, let's talk about some of the stuff that you have out there. Yeah. We mentioned your book. It came out last year. Congratulations. Thank you. Amazon bestseller. Yeah. Published by uh, imprint by goop. Yep. Uh, Goop's imprint. Um, you know, tell us, uh, you know, obviously people know that they can find it out there, but who is this book really for? Right. Who is this book really for? Well, it's funny because they they do make you pick a demographic, but I'm like, no, it's for everyone. <laughs> yeah. And I think if you've listened to this far into the interview, <laughs> you can already see that. Yeah. It's nice to hear it again from the. Yeah. Themselves. I mean, the thing is, again, really what this is about is harnessing the energy that we've been putting into stress and using that energy to reach our highest potential and live our greatest version of ourselves. So, I mean, I believe that pretty much men and women both need to be able to deal with stress better. And it's not that stress is a terrible thing for us. I mean, I think when we're under stress all the time and we're constantly, I think there's almost two versions of stress. There's the pressure of stress. Like I got to get there on time. I need to pick this person up. I need to be there. And then there's the emotional stress where you're holding in like that resentment or that fear or anger, those toxic emotions. I think there's two versions of it. So I think learning like a little bit of pressure is good and healthy like we need that to thrive and survive but also i think learning that we don't need to hold the emotional energy and stress in the body and then we'll reach our highest potential so to me it's about simple tools that help you make big shifts and tuning in becoming more aware and becoming more empowered to be you know living your most aligned life and that's called the power source you can find a link in the show notes that are there and then we gave a little plug for it earlier. We just want to give you a chance to mention it again because it's always nice when you can find things that you can, you know, some people love working out mm-hmm. at a location. Some mm-hmm. people like doing things at home. Some people want the option of all. Yeah. Our whole thing in this podcast is let's show you all the tools in the toolbox that are out there. Love it. And you can find the thing that really aligns yeah. with you. So they have the online, online aligned life studio. Yeah. And the thing is, so... I was, you know, I have, I've had two kids and I had a studio for eight years and it was, it's just like a lot of work to have a facility and have 20 people working there. And so when, when I became a mom, someone came to me and offered to buy the studio. So I I thought, you know what, this is going to be a good opportunity. And then when I did sell it is when I started writing books and then the books then became these online programs. And that was, it resonated with people. I think people want you know, videos more now than ever. And also if you can have a guide, the book and the video together, it's a perfect way to really integrate into a system. And so, and the other thing is I've been working with, you know, LA's or I guess LA and New York's like celebrity and pro athletes. And I thought, you know, I want to be able to give this method and message to the world. And it felt like I was limited to only working with these people individually. So now people that don't have access to LA and New York can do this, this movement medicine all over the world. We have people in like 15 countries doing the movement medicine. So it's pretty exciting and it's only the beginning. I love that. And uh, this dome Yes. That you have too. <laughs> this is just one of the many tools. Yeah, you have a bunch of other tools that are on the website as well. Yep, exactly. And we'll exactly. link to that in the show notes. What are some examples? There's like a kit. There's yeah. some other at-home tools. Who would use them and what are they for? Well, I like to call these, um, you know, 
self-care tools, right? So they're going to help promote circulation and blood flow and help you tune into your deep core. So I have the big roller, which is what Goop kind of put on on the map. It's the big 36 inch roller. It's what I wrote my first book about. It was called Taller, Slimmer, Younger, 21 Days to a Foam Roller Physique. People didn't realize that you could use the roller for an actual workout too. Mm. So we use it for self-care, for hydrating the connective tissue, for rolling out the knots, but also we use it for an amazing like Pilates based workout. Um, and then I created the travel roller as well. And then we have the body sphere that goes with the power source and I'm writing the video course for the power source right now. So that'll be coming out this year as well. And then we have the domes. You get two of these because you can do it on your both feet, both hands. Um, you can give one to a friend. And then I have the um, infinity roll, which is basically like, you know how back in the day in physical therapy, they take two tennis balls and put it in a sock. Did mm -hmm, you ever have that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So essentially that's what this is. Some people, I call it the infinity roll because it looks like an infinity sign, but some people call it the peanut, but you can put that under your arches of your feet. That's amazing between your shoulder blades. Um, those have sold out on Goop a number of times too. So we have all of those tools and I have a signature rebounder, a little mini trampoline. Again, like people want to get that cardio aspect, the lymph release. So my program you can do as a workout, but also as your own, you know, movement medicine or self healing, like body work, self body work. So that's pretty cool. And then I'm also working on a new book that is the idea, the concept is body intelligence. So it's helping people again, tune in and realize this inner wisdom of ourselves. What did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> when you were growing you know, up, what did you want to be? I think I actually wanted to be a doctor. Yeah. But then I realized they didn't know everything. And it's not that I don't respect what they are, you know, doing. It's just more like I knew there was a little more to it. And I'm just a little more out there like that. I wanted to investigate and I like to push the envelope a little bit. I like to break through some of the boundaries. And that's where I think it's interesting. The pelvic floor is, you know, it's still not really that talked about in the media, in our culture, but it's such an important piece. And if we have the awareness of that, we're going to tap into this whole new sense of power. Yeah. And you even see more doctors talking about it. Yeah. And in a way that's what you're doing here on this podcast and with the work that you do is you're teaching people how to be a version of their own doctor. Yeah. How to be their own body whisperer. Yeah. And that's cool. So you're fulfilling your, uh, your vision as a kid. And I really like the idea of bridging science with spirituality and just helping people enjoy where they're at more. One or two books that have been pivotal for you or teachings or teachers in your spiritual development i love joe dispenza dr joe have you read his stuff i haven't read it but i'm very familiar i'm with sure him, you yeah. are um i really like the new one that's out becoming supernatural but the other one that really helped me was um breaking the habit of being yourself so that was a really big one for me and then also i really like bruce lipton he wrote a book called the biology of belief and his whole thing is very much, and I love Carolyn Mice as well. They're all in the same wheelhouse of sort of breaking through some of these old paradigms that we've believed for so long that we are our genetics and we are but in our DNA. But actually they, they all are saying and what they've seen and studied is that our lifestyle and our mind is going to impact a lot more than our genetics. So I think that's where we're going in medicine and um, in shifting the consciousness. So I'm excited to be a part of that. Well, you're a major part of it. <laughs> and I want to thank you for coming on this podcast and sharing your work with our listeners. Thank you. And really help us doing the most simplest but toughest thing, which is make that and strengthen that connection between how we feel and what's really going on. Yes. When we have that awareness, everything else in our life becomes possible. So I thank it's you for true. coming on the podcast and helping our listeners discover and dive deep into that. Lauren, thank super you. appreciate You're you. amazing. You're really incredible. You are meant to do this. So thank it's you. an honor. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> Yay.